Hey there, everybody. This is Gary from Constricted and Addicted. What I'd like to talk to you today about is the Super Dwarf Retic and what makes a Super Dwarf Retic. The first and foremost thing that I have seen that that qualifies a Super Dwarf Retic is 50% or more of the Super Dwarf lineage. Now we talk about Super Dwarf and we talk about Dwarf. Before I go any further into this video, let me tell you that I am not an expert in any way, shape, or form. As a matter of fact, I've really been keeping Super Dwarf retics for the better part of the last six to nine months now. Uh, but in the six to nine months that I've been keeping them, I've been trying to do a lot of research and find out more about them because obviously I really want to give these guys the most optimum care that I can. But what I can tell you is, is that you've got two Dwarf and Super Dwarf localities. You've got your Super Dwarf, which comes from the Madu, the Kalatoa, and the Karapa lines. Then you've got your Dwarf, which is the Salayer, the Tombalongan, the Jampea, and the Kayuadai, I believe it is pronounced. And these seven localities make up the Dwarf and the Super Dwarf. Super Dwarf stays relatively smaller. Anywhere between 7 and 12 feet, I believe, are the numbers. Anywhere between 10 and 15 feet make up the dwarf. They're a little bit larger than your typical mainland reticulated python, still not reaching 18 to 20 feet. The reality is, is that we don't know how big these snakes are going to get until they're full grown. So this one here, Clarice, she is 32% Kalatoa, 32% Jampea. She has the potential to be one of my larger retics. The other thing is, is that feeding a super dwarf retic or dwarf retic does not make them necessarily larger. It makes them obese, therefore leading to health problems, uh, heart disease, and other things just like we as human beings experience when we overeat. So overfeeding your reticulated python is not going to make them grow bigger, especially the super dwarf and the dwarf localities. What makes them a super dwarf and a dwarf really is the availability of food where they're from. If you went to the islands, Kalatoa, Madu, Salayer, Jampea, and so forth, the, the food availability to these animals is much less than if you went to the mainland. So they've adapted over the years and obviously at shows in the size of the animal itself. But when you come to the States, when you have breeders like New Shed Serpents, and you have uh, captive bred pythons, Weldon Barker, and you have Reach Out Reptiles, Garrett Hartle, what makes a super dwarf a super dwarf? How do you get a 50% Kalatoa? If you mate a Kalatoa with a mainland, will you make super dwarf reticulated pythons? And these are all questions that I had in the beginning, and now I'm getting asked these questions by friends and other people. And again, all I can give you is the research that I personally have done on these animals. And let's just talk about Cora for a minute. I'll get Cora out. We'll talk about Cora's lineage, her morphs, and how she became a 50% Kalatoa. So I have had Cora out many times you guys have heard the story about her she is my absolute i love this girl to death but she's 50 percent kalatoa platinum phantom so how did she become 50 percent kalatoa with two different morphs and the only thing that i can think of oh my god she got into the light I'll probably edit that out. But anyway, so she's 50% Kalatoa, Platinum, Phantom. And how did she become, you know, 50% Kalatoa with all these genes? Well, the way that I see this happening, whether it happened or not, if Chris watches this video, I'm sure he'll correct me. But basically, she started out as a 100% Kalatoa, and she was probably mated to a 100% mainland platinum or phantom. So you take the percentage of the super dwarf 
and you divide that by two. So you have 100% Kalatoa made it to a 0% mainland, which means that there's no super dwarf or dwarf gene in that mainland, and you divide that by two, the offspring are going to be 50%. So now he's got a 50% phantom offspring if in fact the mainland was phantom. So now you take that 50% phantom, or maybe you take 100% Kalatoa, and you mate that to a platinum or phantom, whichever one, I don't remember which one I said, but the other one, mainland, and then the offspring are going to be 50% Kalatoa of the mainland. So you've got 100% Kalatoa mated to a mainland. You take that 100%, you divide it by two. Now you've got 50% platinum. So now you've got a 50% platinum and you've got a 50% phantom. You take those two together and you mate them. Now you've got 50% phantom Kalatoa, made it to a 50% phantom Kalatoa. Just to make sure I'm right here, 50% Kalatoa platinum to a 50% Kalatoa phantom. The offspring will be 50% phantom platinum Kalatoa, which is what she is. You take those percentages of the 50%, which equals 100%, because now you've got two 50% Kalatoas, the offspring divided by two will be 50%. So it took a lot of work for Chris, for me to even explain this, right? But it took a lot of work for Chris to make this animal. And, and that's why she was so expensive. Uh, she's obviously a handful, but I love her to death for what she does and who she is. The Super Dwarf Retic is like having a mainland retic personality in a much smaller package. Now, we talk about that these animals can get to, you know, 10, 12 feet long, which is very manageable and much more acceptable in my house than a 20 plus foot reticulated python. But just because they have the 50% Kalatoa or the, uh, 25% you know, Kalatoa with 25% Jampea, that does not guarantee that they're going to remain small animals. Genetics plays a huge part in how big these animals get. Cora is going on three years old. She's roughly six feet long and she's not very you know, big around. If I can get her off me. As you can see, she is you know, about the size of a a corn snake, really, you know, a good sized corn snake. She's got great uh, genetics as far as I'm concerned. And I, I don't overfeed her. She gets fed every 14 days and she gets fed a prey item that's just a little bit bigger than the size of her, uh, the largest part of her body. So she remains fairly small, but she is growing. And I, as her keeper, have to regulate the amount of food she gets and how she gets that food. The retics are active tonight. Let me tell you, and I'm not gonna let another one get up into the light fixture. Uh, but here we have my girl. She's a 25% golden child Kalatoa. So basically with her, a 50% Kalatoa was mated to a full grown mainland, you take that 50%, divide it by two, now you've got a 25% animal. So Ruby here is 25% Kalatoa, and she actually, probably of all the snakes I have, of all the retics I have, she has the greatest possibility of becoming a larger snake with only 25% Kalatoa. But again, genes are going to play a big part and how big she gets. Uh, as we saw with Clarice, Clarice is 32% Kalatoa, 32% Jampea. Jampea is not super dwarf, Jampea is dwarf. She should realistically grow fairly large, probably between 12 and 15 feet long, if I was to bet or guess on that. The reality is, is that 
She's my smallest one at two years old. She's less than five feet long and she's much skinnier than Cora is. So genetics, again, they play a big role in how big these retics get. But I don't think that she's gonna get, you know, 20 feet long. I have all female retics too, and female retics do get larger than male retics. So that is another thing to consider when you are purchasing whether it's a super dwarf, a dwarf, or a mainland retic, that the female retic will get larger than the male retic. But here's Ruby. Ruby's 25%. She's probably about, I don't know, probably about six feet long, all said and done. Um, but she's, again, she doesn't have a whole lot of girth to her. She is less, she's just over a year old, actually. She was just over a year old when I got her. And I've had her now for probably about three or four months. Um, so when I got her, she was probably about six feet long. So she hasn't grown much since I've had her. But again, she's not two years old yet. So we'll see how big she is at two with the feeding regimen that I have her on. And I am going to include Georgia in this video. I have mentioned before that we are really unsure of Georgia's locality. And I think Georgia is a prime example of retics, guessing, and uh, you know not really knowing how big a retic will get. I have a receipt for Georgia that says that she's 50% Kalatoa. Now, I have seen a lot of Kalatoa wild type reticulated pythons and her markings don't really resemble for a wild type Kalatoa. But again, genetics can play a factor. If it was a wild type Kalatoa 100% mated to a 100% mainland, can you not go up my shirt? Thank you. Uh, then you've got a 50% Kalatoa with wild type markings and it's very possible that she could have the wild type markings of a mainland retic, but yet still have the genes of a Kalatoa 50% uh, animal. She's almost four years old. And at four years old, she's eight feet long. The only reason that I would possibly believe that this animal is Kalatoa is because at four feet long, a female retic is usually larger than eight feet long. Uh, and I gotta have some faith in her genes and that maybe she actually is a super dwarf retic. Um, her breeder was not the most reputable breeder in the industry. I have told people who the breeder was and, and had that same response. So I love her to death. She is one of my favorite animals. And the reality is, is I don't know if she's 50% Kalatoa or not. But at four years old, at eight feet long, and not very big around, for being a female reticulated python, she definitely shows some, you know, size resemblance of what a Kalatoa can look like at four years old, you know, eight feet long and not very big around. So I kind of hope, I was kind of scattered with this video. Uh, these, these guys are like super active tonight and they're all over the place. Uh, Cora went completely up into the light fixture. I was afraid she was going to get burned, but she actually didn't even touch the light. She went around the top and it was kind of funny watching her go up and over. She really never even went into the light fixture, but she was up there, had my attention. And then these guys are just kind of all over the place tonight. They're active. They just got fed a few days ago. So I'm very glad that I could get them out and I could have this video and kind of share my knowledge with you on the super dwarf and dwarf reticulated pythons. There is a difference. A dwarf reticulated python will get to about 15 feet. That's why it's called a dwarf. If you go with the super dwarf, the possibility is, is that animal can get about 12 feet long, but you'll never know how big the animal will really get until it is full grown. Uh, there are possibilities that you could get a 50% Kalatoa that could end up 
14 feet long. Um, do your research, check them out, but the dwarves and the super dwarf retics are definitely a much viable option to someone who doesn't want to wrestle with a 20 foot snake and have the beautiful personality of a reticulated python in a smaller package. You guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. There's some cool stuff coming up. Stay tuned. We'll see you then. Have a good time.